eternos agradecimentos por tudo que fez pelo futebol, né, por todas as portas abertas que deixou para todos nós que viemos depois. Vida longa ao rei. Parabéns. There is no argument. Pele is football's number one. The king. That might sound strange to you, but with each minute of this video, it will become clearer. The embodiment of being number one. We can all agree Pele was first. He was the first footballer to marvel the world in unison. In a time where there was no internet, no YouTube, no satellite TV, Pele was the face splashed on the front cover of newspapers. He acted in movies and even turned up in Hollywood. Heck, Pele could even sing. Pele was the first footballer to transcend the game. He was known all over the world and used his fame to elevate footballers to celebrities. He is the mold upon which all modern footballers were shaped. And we haven't even begun to talk about his magic on the pitch. Pele was a striker who would come short to get the ball. He also had the goal-scoring instinct and athleticism of Cristiano Ronaldo and the skills of the most elegant legends of the game. He didn't have a bag full of tricks. He was the bag. Young Edson Arantz do Nascimento loved football ever since he was a kid, even if his mother tried to forbid him from playing the game. His father loved the game as well, but horrific injuries stopped his career. This meant the entire family grew up in poverty because of his failed dream. So, Pele would play barefooted with footballs made out of a newspaper-filled sock, tied together with string. No wonder he was creative. His name was Edson, after notable inventor Thomas Alva Edison. Pele's love for the game was accompanied by an innate talent and a willingness to prove himself right and others wrong. By the age of 15, he was already playing for Santos, and he was even playing for the Brazilian national team, all before turning 17. That international debut against Argentina, in which he also scored his first goal, was the first step in Pele's revenge. You see, in 1950, when Pele was just 10 years old, he saw his father crying inconsolably as Brazil lost the World Cup final on home soil to Uruguay. I saw my father cry. I say, say why, why do you cry? You know, because men don't cry. At that time, men could not cry. My father said, oh, oh, Brazil lost the World Cup. He made a promise to his devastated father right there. I remember jokingly saying to him, don't cry, Dad, I'll win the World Cup for you. Fourteen years later, in Sweden, he became the youngest footballer to feature in a World Cup. He then became the youngest to assist, the youngest to score, the youngest to claim a hat-trick, and the youngest to score twice in the final. Can you believe it? Pele wasn't even 18 years old and had already won the World Cup, scoring six goals in four games. When the final whistle blew, he collapsed on the pitch. He had already kept his promise to his dad, and he still had a whole career ahead of him. On the subject of his career, there's something you need to understand. Yes, Pele played most of his career for Brazilian side Santos, never making the move to Europe. It's not like the European giants didn't want to bring in Pele. In fact, a plan was put in motion to stop this from happening as he was declared as a national treasure. After the 1958 success, the eyes of the footballing world were fixed on Pele. Real Madrid, Juventus, Inter and Manchester United, they were all fighting to get him. In order to prevent a move abroad, the Brazilian president at the time declared him a national treasure. Buying him would be a crime. The fact that he never officially played in Europe is often a source of criticism from modern football pundits. We've heard it before. He played in a farmer's league. That line isn't just false, it's an absolute insult too. Even if we could argue for hours about the level of South American football, or how crucial many South American players are to teams in Europe, football was completely different back then. International transfers weren't the norm. Even more so, when a South American footballer was finally convinced to move abroad, this usually meant being nationalized so they would not count as foreigners. This would then make them eligible for the national team, as was the case for legends like Di Stefano and Puskas in Spain or Sibiri with Italy. This also means that there was no talent exodus. Only the best of the best played in each continent. Let's imagine that for a moment a scenario in which intercontinental transfers don't occur. Neymar, Messi, Di Maria, Luis Suarez, all playing in the Copa Libertadores? It would be incredible! So when the Copa Libertadores was played in Pele's time, this was the case. The cup was as hard fought as the European Cup, and Pele Santos ruled the continent. 
They won six Brazilian championships, ten Paulistas championships, and two Copa Libertadores. As they'd already conquered South America, they went and proved themselves to the world. Pele took Santos on tour to win two Intercontinental Cups against the AC Milan of Cesar Maldini, Rivera, and Trapattoni, and the Benfica side of Eusebio and Santano. Santos and Pele's fame grew so big, they would extend their international tour and take their footballing show on the road. As everyone wanted to see Pele play, Santos cashed in on the experience. In 1959, the Brazilian team played 99 matches in South and Central America, then moving on to Bulgaria, Belgium, the Netherlands, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, Spain, you name it, they played there. We were in demand, wrote Pele in his autobiography. The suits were very keen to cash in. By 1962, Santos's circus made it all the way to England, the home of the beautiful game, and Pele put on his show to sold-out stadiums across the land. The Guardian's correspondent at the time, Eric Todd, summed up perfectly the admiration commanded by Pele. When one considers the number of superlatives that are squandered on some inside forwards in this country, the futility of trying to find new ones to describe Pele becomes all the more obvious. Once, when playing against Sheffield Wednesday, rival midfielder Tommy Craig spent the final 10 minutes chasing Pele up and down the field. He wasn't trying to get the ball from him, he was trying to get his shirt. I told the referee to give me a signal when he was about to blow for time, so I could stand beside the great man, Craig told the Daily Record. When the final whistle came, I grabbed Pele around the waist until he had parted with the jersey. Other footballers were desperate to get a souvenir from him at a time when swapping shirts wasn't a thing. Pele established himself as an international star, a sporting hero that transcended the sport, a man people would pay to see. Pele and Santos's world tour includes a story like no other, the day they stopped a war. Nigeria was in the middle of a violent civil war when Pele landed there to play a friendly against the national team. Both factions agreed to a ceasefire so the match could take place and Nigerians could celebrate in awe of the king of football. His Highness received his title by conquering the world with Brazil, not once or twice, but three times. He won the World Cup in 1958 as a teenager and was part of the squad in 1962, though he was injured for most of the tournament. Mexico 1970 would be his last dance, and it would be a fitting farewell for Pele as the Brazilian team would play some of the most wonderful football ever seen. It would also prove to be a seminal moment in football history as Mexico 1970 was the first World Cup to be broadcasted internationally and in color. Finally, the entire world could see Pele in action. Having done it and won it all, scoring over a thousand goals, Pele retired. But not for long. As we said, he was a pioneer. He was also the first superstar to take his talent to the USA. It was former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger who convinced him to come out of retirement and join the New York Cosmos. Pele was fundamental in footballing becoming relevant in North America. And the story sums up the legend. Pele was a footballer who acted as an ambassador of the game. His royal eminence, who would sit at the same table as popes, secretaries of state, and kings. He was friends with Nelson Mandela, and Queen Elizabeth knighted him, even though he's not of British descent. Perhaps his greatest title is the simplest one. Coming from a nation that continues to produce legend after legend, Pele will always be the best Brazilian footballer of all time. And whenever you see a record broken by Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi, or in the future by Haaland and Mbappe, it's Pele's initial record they are breaking. We'll finish on some words by the king himself. Like Cristiano Ronaldo said, when Pele talks, the world listens. I tease the players now.